Michael J. Gardner, who I sent on a mission to investigate the sugar-free food trend. And now the growing question, why are we still packing on the pounds even though we're eating more of these sugar-free foods than ever. So what are the experts like you say? Well, we know that we process sugar-free foods differently in the body, but they also confuse the brain, and that's the key. And that's why some people actually gain weight rather than lose weight um, with this phenomenon. Can I explain why this happened? The promise of these sugar-free foods gives you the idea you can have the benefits of sugar without guilt. I get it, I get it. You feel like you're cheating the system, but you may actually be cheating your system because they can play tricks on your brain. And that's how you might end up packing on the pounds. So I'm gonna take you through this. I want you to understand this is so critical. So let's just say you went out there, you got some of these guilt-free foods, right? Normally when you eat sugar, regular sugar, you don't get that benefit because there's a cost to it, right? You have the sugar, but your brain says, oh, I get it, right? It knows you've had enough and it shuts off your sweet tooth. That's how it's supposed to work. Now you feel guilty, but your body's playing a home game. It knows what's happening. When you eat these sugar-free foods, you think you're getting away with stuff. But guess what your brain says? Your brain's so darn smart, it doesn't let the artificial sweetener tell it that it actually has had sugar. So your tongue tastes it, but your brain is smarter, doesn't get it. So your tongue goes out there and starts wanting you to eat anything. You look high and low for more sweets because it's not your brain that you're satisfying. It's only your tongue. So you don't want to fall prey to this. So Dr. Cottle, bottom line. What should people be looking for to incorporate into their diet if they want to keep some of these sugar-free foods in? Well, first of all, it's okay to have some sugar-free foods in your diet. That is, I mean, people ask all, that all the time. That's okay, but you've got to do it in moderation. You can't go buck wild with this. You can't go crazy and eat a ton of cookies and stuff like that because you will have problems. So that's the first thing to keep in mind. Um, but here's an example of kind of what we were talking about before. You know, a lot of sugar-free foods may have a high fat content, but you can find some uh, foods that actually have a lower fat content, like these chocolate chip cookies, which I love chocolate chip cookies so this works for me but still don't eat a ton of these which is the idea so, so you know we really need to be checking nutritional labels that's a big thing count your carbs count your calories and this is the other thing I wanted to say Dr. Oz is if we do this and kind of cut back a little bit on the sugar-free foods that we're eating and not eat too many it'll mean that the things that we do eat that are sweet they'll taste even that much uh -huh, better exactly yes and that's why in my life I've always felt it's a slippery slope to eat these kinds of foods mm -hmm. yeah. because you're not dealing with the cause of your cravings. So it's a low calorie band aid. Right. And you're not That's allowing true. yourself to really taste the foods the way they're supposed to be designed for you, the way your body can actually analyze them and use them effectively. You can also save some money when you eat real food. So, how can someone break? their relationship with these sugar-free foods if they realize they're having too many of them? Well, you know, one of the things I learned in the investigation that I did was that the sweeteners, um, they're often hundreds of times more sweet than actual sugar, which is really amazing. So you almost have to wean yourself down off of the sweeteners just to kind of get your taste buds back to normal in a way. Yep, yep. So I call it the 21 step down plan, which is the idea that you cut down gradually over 21 days. So let's say you have a cup of coffee, you like coffee, I'm not a coffee drinker, but let's say you do. Um, and let's say you put a tablespoon of sugar in your coffee every morning. Well, um, or maybe two. Cut back to one tablespoon for a week or so. Then go down to a half tablespoon for a week or so. And then maybe just use a little bit of milk that has sugar naturally in it. Right. The idea is to slowly cut back so that the sweet that we taste will actually taste even sweeter because our taste buds will kind of ramp down a little Nicely bit. Nicely done, Dr. Carl. Thank you so much. Up next, simple solutions to satisfy your sweet tooth without any of the bad side effects.